Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Avinash and uh, in this video we are going to discuss how Linux operating system boots. See, whenever we turn on our machines, whether it, it may contain Windows operating system or Linux operating system, whenever you turn on, so the login screen won't appear immediately, right? It is going to take some time. Okay, some machines, it will take one minute, some will take two minutes, right? So definitely it is going to take some time. So what actually happens when you turn on your laptop or machine? So then till that login prompt appears, till you enter the password and the actual desktop appears, what exactly happens? That is what Linux boot process is. Now you might get a doubt, okay, is it really important to know this uh, Linux boot process? Uh, why? Because nowadays most of our workload is running in cloud, right? In cloud, we don't have any option to install any operating systems. All we need to do is just select an AMI that is nothing but a machine image or select the required operating system. Then select the configuration, open required ports and launch it. That's it. So that we can simply get connected to it. Even I, I, I didn't remember when I have installed uh, this Linux operating system in a machine. Okay. So, but whenever we are learning something, right, we should know how things works. Actually, this is like, you know, the backend process when you turn on a device. So, to understand this boot process better, I have prepared one slide. Let's go to the slide. Okay. Once we power on, what happened, it is going to send power connectivity to all the components like a CPU, memory, storage, motherboard. So the power supplies to all the components. That is the first step. So when you complete this power on, so next step is BIOS initialization. So basically BIOS, in, BIOS stands for basic input or output system. So or UEFI also in recent times widely used one. UEFI stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. So this is the first thing that start this entire process, whatever process we are going to get here. So this BIOS initialization is the first process. So what actually happens when you initialize a BIOS? So a test happened. The test is post power on self test. So when you turn on this machine, so post power on self test, it is going to check what all the hardware components we have in that machine whether it is working properly or not or any hardware is faulty or not so that test it perform technically we call that as the post power on self test so once this post operation completed so then it is going to look for the boot device See, we can boot from our uh, hard disk SSD or our STDs. Earlier, we used to boot from CDs and floppies, right? Even now, we can boot from uh, uh, USB if you want to uh, install a brand new operating system, right? If you don't want to uh, like uh, use an existing operating system, you want to do a fresh installation, you have to boot from that USB device. So once this BIOS initialization completed, it look for bootloader. So in Windows, we call it as a MBR, master boot record. But in Linux, in most of the recent Linux, it is using GRUB, Grand Unified Bootloader. So basically, this GRUB knows what are all the operating systems or kernels we have in this machine. See, you might have multiple operating systems or multiple kernels also. So this will prompt us to choose required kernel, required operating system that we want to load. So you might get it out, okay, can we run multiple operating systems in a single machine? Yes, we can. Okay, like a dual booting uh, option is there. Or can we have multiple kernels also? Yes, we can. So this bootloader, once this uh, BIOS initialization completed, this bootloader gives a window. So this window help us to choose the required uh, uh, kernel. If you don't choose any option, it will pick a default one. The default configuration, like uh, we will have a configuration file, it picks from the default one. Okay, again, the screen won't last forever. The screen appears only like, you know, hardly 5 to 10 seconds. Within the 10 seconds only, you have to take an action. You have to choose the required uh, uh, kernel. So once this 
grub load the required kernel into the memory so then actual kernel loads here so it, we are using this to find the required kernel and actual kernel loading happening here so what happened this kernel is going to load to the memory temporary memory so once this kernel got loaded it is going to initialize the hardware drivers okay see current uh, recent generation operating systems by default we are getting this uh, uh, drivers but we used to have a driver for uh, one driver uh, for hard disk one driver for uh, graphic one driver for uh, motherboard so we used to install all that okay so so this uh, linux kernel actually loads the hardware drivers and it's basically set up the memory it is going to look for user spaces so once this actual kernel loaded then we will get into this init process okay so this init process right you might use uh, this init command n number of the times right for example uh, if you are giving init 0 if you are giving init 0 what happened so basically init 0 is a halt symbol or shutdown symbol if you are giving this init 0 this machine is going to shut down if you are giving init 6 if you are giving init 6 it's going to reboot okay it, it, it's like a restart or reboot so we have inits from 0 to 6 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay these are day to day operations we use init 0 and init 6 but what exactly this init uh, 1 2 3 4 5 actually and this kernel actually most of the times it loads with init 3 so what exactly this init 1 is so init 1 uh, single user mode without networking okay non root user but only one root we, we can log in as a user but it won't have any network connectivities so in it too right so multi user multiple users can log in when we are in that in it too mode but without networking again so in it three right yes this is commonly used one so in it three what happened we can log in as multi user mode multiple users we can log in with networking it will have like you know connectivity to network also so in it for basically it is not used or uh, not defined so then in it 5 we call it as a x11 so basically in it 5 is same as this in it 3 plus ui some linux operating system also will have some user interfaces okay so this in it 3 giving multi user mode with uh, with networking right when coming to this in it 5 multi user mode with networking plus if you have any graphic packages available that actually load display display management actually loads so based on the selection this is going to right so create uh, the, the option is going to select so as i told most of the times init 3 or init 5 is going to select here so once this is completed so then the required services system services processes os services is going to uh, initialize so the user space whether required um, volumes are there whether required storage is available or not everything it is going to verify and then we will get the login prompt so we will get username and password once you enter this username and password so then you are going to log into the desktop so then the required services and everything is going to start desktop environment is going to initialize or cli uh, like you know environment is going to initialize and you can start working on that if you set up a password then it will prompt for the password then only it goes to next step if you have not set up the password so simply it will directly log in and it load all the services so this is uh, how exactly linux boot process so first whenever you turn on bios is going to initialize it perform a test called post power on self test so once this bios initialization completed grub or bootloader loads it look for the required kernel once you select the required kernel 
kernel is going to look for hardware drivers or memory management and everything so then a default init process is going to initialize init 3 or init 5 okay is going to pick as a default option so then user space initialization user login will prompt here by verifying all the file systems so then what happened then login page comes and once you enter username and password you will get the desktop okay so what are the common issues we get so if you observe this linux operating system sometimes file system may corrupt or we may not have enough space uh, enough space available to boot the operating system or um, uh, kernel uh, problems right so most of the times rebooting and like uh, verifying that uh, logs will help us so whenever you are using aws right so uh, you can select a instance you can go to the instance monitoring and uh, you can verify the logs if any boot level issues occurred so that we will discuss in detail in our uh, uh, coming uh, videos how to troubleshoot uh, boot level issues in linux operating system in aws environment all right i hope you found this video helpful and um, Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos on uh, this Linux operating system or more on uh, uh, AWS services. All right, see you again in next video. Thank you, guys.